Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're talking about a brand new feature coming to Godot 4.0, which is going to make lighting a whole lot easier. And in order to understand this, we're first going to have to understand exactly how lighting works in the 3D world. We're going to do a quick overview of something called global illumination. And we're going to start by showing you not global illumination. And that is what this scene I've created here is a very simple scene. And you can see here, we have a light in the scene, we have an inverted box, we have another box inside. And you're going to see when the light hits this initial box, their shadow shows up there. And you're going to say this doesn't really look that realistic. What's the op what's the actual possibility of having zero light hit the back of this box? It's never going to happen in reality because in reality you're going to have light reflecting off of other surfaces. So for example, you would have a certain amount of light from this go up here, bounce here and come back here. You'd have a certain amount of light come over here and bounce back and so on. The secondary amount of light, this light bouncing if you will, is what is called global illumination. And that is normally solved this way. So here you can see a scene with actual GI setup or global illumination setup. The way this is done in the Godot engine is you create a GI probe. This is basically a box that envelops the world that is going to be simulated for lighting. It's a way of saying this particular area uh, calculate the, the light, the bouncing in it. That way you could have GI in some areas and not others. So of course you could make a giant GI probe box, but you're going to get crappy results and it's going to give you bad performance. But what you can see here is once we've added the GI box in here, and we've baked the lighting out. There's a couple of other steps involved. So you got to basically say uh, for each thing in the scene that it is involved. So here, used in baked lighting is yes. So when you bake the lighting, so just like my GI probe, hit the bake lighting, and then now you have a scene like this. So when we go ahead and move our light around in the world, this light is not only, you know, so you don't have the absolutes going on, you actually have these bounces. So now if we go and look at behind the surface, it's not completely black. It's darker because it is uh, getting the least light of everything in the scene. So you're seeing other areas and other angles uh, are getting more light. Like so you can see a little bit of banding off because obviously certain areas are going to get less and less light than other areas, but the global illumination is enabling some light to bounce off of other surfaces in the scene and light the back. So you don't get this jarring you know, lack of light. You don't get this boom kind of amount of light going on. You get this nice little bounce going in there. So that's basically what global illumination is all about. There is some calculations involved in doing it. Uh, there is a performance hit involved in doing it, but basically you're going to do this if you want to in any way have realistic looking lighting. Well, with the Godot 4.0, in addition to a new renderer, we've also got a new lighting option. And where this really shines, we go back to this model right here. Well, in order to enable this, I had to create, um, let me go back to the one with GI. Again, I had to do the GI probe and bake the lighting out. Well, what happens if I have a large dynamic world where that's not really feasible or if it's being populated dynamically, so I can't do the volume around it? Well, that's where this new feature comes in. It's called sign distance field, GI sign distance field usage, and it uses space math. Uh, it's about the extent of the technical details you're going to get from me. But if you want to go ahead and enable it, there's just a couple of steps involved. So basically, go into your, obviously, I'm using the Godot 4 nightly build. And if this crashes, do not be incredibly shocked because because, well, that's what happens. Uh, so go here, and we've got all of the meshes in the scenes. I'm going to turn them all on. And what we want to do is go to the Global Illumination tab, which, by the way, is new. And we're going to switch from uh, the disabled to baked. All right, so now we've got everything in the scene ready to be GI'd. We're going to create a world environment if we don't already have one. And in the world environment, all we need to do is go ahead. So I'll go ahead into that environment that I've created or create a new one and go to edit. And then what we do is just head on down here to the SDFGL or GI. So that's the sign distance field global illumination. And we can turn it on. And now we are getting, you immediately see. So we got some light sources coming out. See over here, this guy right there starts getting lit up. So you're getting those secondary bounces immediately. I don't have to do GI probe. I don't have to do anything. Now, this is going to take a little bit more performance requirements, but this still was written to run on a 1060 um, GPU. So it, it's for medium current kind of style GPUs. But if you're doing a large open world and you want to have this GI lighting, you can immediately do so. There's a couple other advantages to it here. So let's turn on the sky as well. So you can see the end results there. So we can get the sky participating in. So if we want to, I come back here here and we could go ahead and background clear color we could create a sky here so let's yeah let's do that yeah sky sky tab is here so let's go ahead and create a new sky uh let's see edit our sky is a procedural sky 
All right, there we go. So now we have a sky in the world. So now you see we've got the blue light coming in. We get the bouncing. We're getting more realistic lighting basically for free using this. So we didn't have to do any work. We just basically had to turn each mesh that participates on, set it to baked, and then we'd set the um, SDL GI to on, and boom, it just works. So it's all done basically in the mesh under global illumination, and then in the world environment under your environment, and then head on down here to the SDF GI, and you are good to go. You obviously got a number of settings for controlling how it works, the amount of energy in the scene, uh, which can have a pretty profound effect, like so. Uh, and that's kind of the gist of it. The cool thing is on top of all that, we've actually got another secret power. So what I'm going to do is create an object in our world. So let's go up here and let's go ahead somewhere. Actually, let's just do it off the root. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new mesh instance and we will create, uh, let's, make a, let's make a sphere. And then we'll edit that sphere like so. <sighs> Radius of 32, height of uh, let's say 64. All right, let's see how big our sphere looks. There we go. We've got a nice size sphere in our world, like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into said sphere. Uh, let's go back here. So there is our sphere in the world. And we're going to go ahead and create a material for it. So this is a new standard material. And what we're going to do is add an emissive property here. Emissive is a way of giving off uh, light, basically, from a texture on a material. So let's make this guy red. All right, so we're now giving off red. We can change the energy level of our emission right here. And notice something, we're immediately getting glows in the scene. So I'm gonna move over here. Let's move close to the surface, like so. And you will see, if I jack the energy way up, and we go back to our world environment. Let's go down here, turn glow on. So glow is on. There you see, so you're immediately getting an emissive result in the world. So if you've got something like a neon sign or something to that effect, and you want to uh, simulate light emissions, let's go drop down to the ground. So you see the effect on the ground around it. You also have emissive light support under uh, the new SDFGI support. So definitely a nice new feature to see there as well. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about this, there is a blog post up on the Godot website. Uh, basically goes into a little bit of a de uh, definition of what things are about. So SDFGI stands for Sign Distance Field Global Illumination. It's a technique to make heavy use of sign distance field and a, a Euclidean distance-based representation of the sign distance function of a grid to create the light map. And you got a little bit more details of it. Uh, interestingly enough, it was Tim Sweeney and Epic Games with their mega grant that helped finance this development. Uh, again, props to uh, Epic Games for the Mega Grants program. It's akin to, it's akin to dynamic real-time light maps, but it does not require unwrapping, nor does it use textures. It enables, it's enabled, and it automatically works by generating global illumination for static objects. It does not require ray tracing. It runs on most current and some years old dedicated GPUs, uh, even mid-end budget CPUs from some years ago. Uh, SDFGI was developed and tested on a GeForce 1060 running at a table uh, stable, 60 frames per sec. Um, we've got uh, light changes are real time, meaning any change in lighting conditions will result in an immediate update. Dynamic objects are supported only for receiving lights from the environment, but they will contribute. Uh, they do not contribute to lighting. Some degree of support is planned for this eventually, but not immediately. Um, SDFGI uh, um, also supports specular reflections, both sharp and rough. So full PBR scenes should just work. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the idea behind it. It's mostly leak free, unlike uh, VCT techniques, which are mostly given, more, most common in use today, like SVOGI, GI probe, et cetera. As long as walls are thicker than a voxel for a given cascade, light will not go through it. Uh, and then they basically talk about how to go about setting it up. We already kind of showed you that. They go into a little bit more detail about how uh, to increase the bounces. By the way, this is going to have a performance implementation. Uh, implication. So do be doing that kind of, you're not going to want to put the bounces up super high if you don't have to. Uh, a couple more details about it are available. And yeah, I will link this, of course, in the linked article down below, but that's definitely a cool new feature. I, I will warn you though, at least on Windows, I do find that Godot 4 right now um, is a little on the super uh, super crashy kind of side of things. Uh, but this is definitely a nice new feature. It does make creating uh, nice dynamic lights in your world, uh, the realistic looking lighting, a heck of a lot simpler. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so that is the new SDFGI lighting in the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.